ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to episode two of Valve Time Database, where we take an in-depth look at an element within Valve's games to determine the larger impact. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the pathogen central to the Left 4 Dead series, commonly referred to as the Infection. This deadly infection sets up the events of the series, making most of the population of the eastern United States violent and animalistic. But is this pathogen more than just a simple illness? Officially known as the Green Flu, the infection is a pathogen which causes increased levels of aggression and decreased mental faculties in those who are infected. Despite its namesake, the Green Flu is more likely to be some sort of rabies-like viral infection, with the name Green Flu being used by the Civil Emergency and Defense Agency in an attempt to cover up the disease. Despite their best efforts, the Graffiti and Safe Room shows that people are aware that this is no ordinary flu. Each of the symptoms of the disease has an important impact on the gameplay of Left 4 Dead. Infected individuals appear pale with milky white eyes, something which helps players to quickly differentiate the cool, sickly palate of the infected from the warm, lively tone of the survivors. The milky white eyes serve a dual purpose in helping to make the infected appear extra creepy and disturbing while also removing the need to draw and animate separate pupils for each of the zombies in the infected hordes, thus improving system performance. The virus also drastically weakens the body's structure to the point where the infected can be easily dismembered even by blunt weapons such as baseball bats and crowbars. This helps give the series a large portion of its trademark gore. As revealed in the Sacrifice comic series, victims of the green flu suffer from severe hallucinations causing them to see the survivors as demonic or monstrous. This may be part of what causes their erratic animalistic behavior and increased aggression. This behavior in-game helps to create a frantic tone as common infected barrel down at you at full force, shouting and coughing, barely able to keep their own balance while leaning into turns. It may also explain why the infected are so easily distracted by loud noises and flashing lights such as car alarms or pipe bombs. The age of most of the living infected encountered in both games ranges from young adulthood to middle-aged. This may indicate that, like with most flus, the people most susceptible to dying from the infection are infants, children, and the elderly. However, this may have simply been a conscious design choice by Valve to improve efficiency and avoid censorship. Most sicknesses transmit in one or more of five ways. Droplet contact through coughing or sneezing, direct physical contact through touch, indirect physical contact such as touching a contaminated surface, airborne transmission, or fecal-oral transmission, usually through contaminated food or water sources. From the evidence in the comic, it would appear that biting and vomiting are the primary methods of transfer, something which is further supported in the gameplay as common infected can be found coughing and puking when in their idle state. However, the green flu may have also been able to change its transmission method or it may exist in multiple distinct strains. For example, it is suggested that the sickness may be related to livestock. In the Left 4 Dead campaign Blood Harvest and Left 4 Dead 2 campaign's Dark Carnival and Swamp Fever, the players will encounter several deceased cows. These cows have had the skin on their heads removed, indicating that a rabies-like test has been performed on the animals. Upon seeing the dead cow pile in Swamp Town, Rochelle sometimes mentions that the news claims the virus spread through livestock. We heard reports that the virus spread through mammals, but I have no idea if that was true. Well, better safe than sorry, I guess. Given the rate at which the infection spread, it would seem that the infection can be airborne as well. This is confirmed in the Sacrifice comic series where it was noted that the sickness was sometimes airborne, sometimes not. The variety of transmission methods suggests that multiple strains of the virus exist. This could explain the rapid rate of mutation of the disease, in that one victim could become infected with multiple strains of the virus. This could help explain the origin of the special infected. In the Sacrifice comic, it is revealed that immunity to the green flu is passed down through the father's genes. The most common theory is that the gene which makes people resistant is a recessive allele on the X chromosome. A recessive allele will only produce its characteristic trait when paired with an identical allele from the other parent. This means that for any female survivor to be resistant, they would need to receive the recessive genes from both their father and mother. Therefore, the number of resistant males would be the square of the number of resistant females, which would explain why the number of male survivors outnumbers the number of female survivors in both games. Unfortunately, resistance to the virus comes at a price. Survivors are not immune to the virus, rather they are asymptomatic carriers of it, a fact revealed in the finale of the Left 4 Dead 2 campaign, The Parish. Rich, are you immune? We are not infected. Negative, Rich. Are you immune? 
Have you encountered the infected? Yeah, you could say that. Rescue 7, are you equipped for carriers? In the last part of the Left 4 Dead campaign, No Mercy, players can find the dead body of what may be Patient Zero of the Green Flu located on the fourth floor of the Mercy Hospital. He can be found in a room with a glass door covered in caution tape and a biohazard warning sign. This is further hinted at in the game Payday the Heist, where players revisit the Mercy Hospital in a campaign which overkills software created in collaboration with Valve. In this campaign, the players rob the Mercy Hospital, infiltrating the fourth floor to draw blood from someone kept in quarantine. This heist opens up with a cryptic statement playing off the airborne nature of the infection, foreshadowing that the robbers may have become infected, and they may be the reason the infection escaped the hospital in the first place. However, we're not entirely sure if the events of Payday would be considered canon. Guys, it feels like something's in the air. Money. <laughs> You're breaking up. Given that the heist ends with the military sending fighter jets to shoot missiles at the hospital, some fans have suggested that the government's strong response may indicate that the nature of the virus was known well before the events of Left 4 Dead, or that the virus may have been created or engineered by the government as a weapon. This idea is further supported by the existence of the special infected, given that under normal evolutionary conditions it can take many years for multiple distinct strains of a virus to form. In total, there are eight types of special infected, the Boomer, Hunter, Smoker, Witch and Tank in Left 4 Dead, who are joined by the Charger, Jockey, and Spitter in Left 4 Dead 2. It is unknown exactly what causes Green Flu victims to mutate into one of the Special Infected, but it is clear that the new types of Special Infected continually mutate and develop as time passes. This is mentioned in the opening cutscene for Left 4 Dead, where Bill touches what appears to be a puddle of Boomer Bile, and notes that it indicates the infected are changing. They're changing. God. Damn it, Bill! Oh, it stinks! <laughs> this is further supported by the emergence of the new special infected types encountered in Left 4 Dead 2, which takes place just one week after the events of the first game. A poster found in one of the rooms in the Vanna Hotel in the campaign Dead Center shows a pie chart noting the infection ratio types. Based on this chart, 63% of all green flu victims become common infected, 4% become spitters, 3% become tanks, 6% become boomers, 9% become hunters, 7% become smokers, 4% become jockeys, and 4% become chargers. The witch, curiously, is missing from this chart. We won't talk about the individual details of each special infected in this episode as we plan to make them the subject of an upcoming episode. In the beginning of Dead Center, the first campaign in Left 4 Dead 2, the players can find a map created by CETA which reveals that the epicenter of the infection was Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This supports the Patient Zero theory in the fictional city of Fairfield which serves as the setting for the Left 4 Dead campaign No Mercy, which is also located in Pennsylvania. The disease quickly spread from Pennsylvania to Georgia in just three weeks, infecting most of the east coast of the United States. Using the population of the East Coast, an estimated 58.28% of the total population of the US, or about 180 million, we can calculate the total number of people infected with the green flu in that time. With only 22% of the population being resistant, combined with a quick rate of transmission as well as the unprepared and ineffective evacuation efforts, and a nearly 100% probability of infection on close contact with an infected person or carrier, it can be estimated that the total number of infected individuals could be up to a maximum of 140 million people. For comparison, between 1918 and 1920, the Spanish flu killed an estimated 2.5% of the population of Earth, or around 50 million people over the course of two years. In epidemiology, the number of secondary infections likely to be caused by an infected individual over time is called its basic reproduction number, denoted as its r naught. Generally, the larger the r naught, the harder it is to control an epidemic. According to a report in the Oxford Journals, the r naught for the Spanish flu was in the range of 1.2 to 3.0 overall, and 2.1 to 7.5 for community-based and confined settings. While there is not enough information in the Left 4 Dead games and comics to accurately determine the green flu's exact r naught number, it would appear to be extremely high, likely higher than any disease in history. While the green flu itself is clearly quite deadly, the Left 4 Dead games have proven that the victims of the flu are effective killers too. Be sure to tune in for a future episode of Valve Time Database, which we'll use to continue talking about the green flu and the special infected themselves. Also be sure to give us some suggestions for future episodes in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all the latest Valve news and developments. Thanks for watching and bye for now.